Consider improved disbursements. We have a motion on the floor to approve disbursements. Move to approve Mr. Kiplinger. Second. Second. Okay. Is there a question? Do we have a question, question, question? I do. Um, we bought a bunch of gate valves, two inch gate valves, and it looked like they were $189 a piece. Our director of operations tell me what kind of gate valve costs one hundred eighty nine dollars. Same way that we at the the last time when we showed the pictures, <coughs> those had the they had the PVC inside or these are oh this is, this is a damn gate valve regular gate valve. Now the other ones were the other valves with the bleeders and all that kind of stuff. Are there I, 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 gate valves? I, I believe that they're having an order of the brass gate valves. As opposed to PVC? Well, yes, I understand that, but 189 bucks a piece. That's what the that's, that's what they're running. Get back to me on that one. I can't tell you what page it's on. Maybe I can. No, I can't. I didn't note down the page. Okay, I look and for. The second one is why are we buying PVC pipe at Sutherland? We ought to have a warehouse full of it. What page was that one? Not, not if there's a, I mean, if it's a smaller, if it's a smaller pipe that we don't carry, we we will go to Sutherland and get it if we need it as an emergency for a project that we're doing. Typically happens. You know what size pipe that was? That'd be pretty good. Yeah, we all we carry here is a two it's inch good. and above. Good yeah, it's gotta be smaller than two inch. Okay, those are my questions. We have a motion and a second on it. Uh, all in favor of item five, approving disbursement, say aye. aye. Uh, no other. The ayes have it. Okay. Number six, general manager's report. Yes, sir. Mr. Vice Chairman and members of the board, I uh, read the, the inquiry, the, the request from uh, Principal <coughs> Philip Sturman, and I didn't see any discrepancies, only that uh, we, we do owe them. For item number five, that was never invoiced by them. So they're the ones that produce the invoices, and they were, were never invoiced. So uh, that's the only thing that I did see, and I replied, and that's all the letter that you see there. That's what if we got back from them on the ongoing thing? For the um, rest of the money they want. Just the uh, paperwork that, that I gave you, that's all. That, you know, 
requesting for, I think, an estimate of $68,000. And but I, I, I don't see any of that being uh, paid back because uh, we did have some loss of revenue on, on those two years. Uh, especially when the tank's not on, you don't pressurize the system as normal. And you know, I, I had producer uh, some information. I have the, the information with me, and I didn't put it in here because the uh, attorney said to make the letter like, short. Instead of so we don't have any letter from them other than the only thing we're getting is your letter back to them. Right. Uh, the information that I provided the last meeting, okay. I know you all have a packet from the last meeting. That's what he requested. And I wanted you guys to see it, you know, the uh, last meeting. And I was going to re reply to that in a pretty, uh, you know, uh, simple have response. You any, have you had anything back since this? Hmm. Since, you, since your letter to them? No. Okay. Okay. Oh. Now, any questions on that? I mean, that, that's all I have for that. Nothing else. Going on item number two. Flooding. Okay. Uh, the SPI flooding. I, I know we had a, our manager, uh, Jared Martinez, he's here today. You know, that, uh, <coughs> there was a lot of rain out there that was flooded everywhere. So I provided some photos, you know, for you guys to see. I, I know that uh, the plumber that worked there prior to the flood, uh, he said that it had a broken flange. He had fixed it, and there was water coming in already. Are you talking about Jake's flower shop? Jake's, yes, that's correct. And uh, that, that uh, restroom that, that is broken from the flag was already flooding in there due to a backup at that area. There's all the uh, Jake's restaurant, Jake's flower shop, and then there's a uh, donut or donut shop. Captain there. Donut. Yeah, there's, there's like five businesses in that square plaza. They're all connected to the same tap. So it seems like the plugging that they had like Wednesday or Thursday uh, caused some some sort of backup in there because the flange was broken. Normally when a restroom was working properly, it shouldn't flood back in there at all. And that's that's what I saw there and I advise a lady that, that owns the place. They would be better off getting their own just tap getting their own wastewater tap, wouldn't they? Tap in there? Well, if that, is that a drainage issue? I mean, what does it have to do with us? I mean, it's a drainage no, issue. No, no, no. Really. no, it doesn't. No. It was that one, uh, the, the sewer that they had in uh, on Wednesday, it was uh, because it was broken and they had a sewer, uh, a plug of grease, and I believe they found some other stuff in there uh, at the tap, you know, where the clean out is at. Yeah. At, their, at their site only. The other line from the district, the main line was clean already. It was flowing properly. It was only internal problems at uh, Jake's. So you're gonna you're gonna respond to her second letter where she asked for some help with the cleanup, environmental cleanup or something. So right, and, I, and, I, and that's not our business, right? Well, it's not. But the only thing that I did mention to her, if she brings me a receipt, I can pass it on to my insurance, which is TML. They'll do the investigation, and I'll provide all the information and more sure that it's not gonna be our problem. You know. They'll mm -hmm. tell them right away, like no. Your problem. Right, talk, talk to the attorney yeah. first because once you once you receive once you accept something from them, mm -hmm. yeah. you know they might come back and say, "Hey, well, you you, you received it and you yeah. accepted it and blah blah blah." And, you know, so I, I would talk to uh, Mr. Marianas about that. I will. I did advise a lady that, that the insurance would look into it and do another investigation on the provided. Uh, from the information that she had given us, so she was aware of But I'll talk to Mr. Barrianis also. She should also contact her insurance, you know. Right, and I advise her, you know, talk to the insurance first, you know, see what they say. Yeah. They don't want to get their insurance involved, because I think uh, she's leasing the place from Jake uh, himself, you know, so he's had some issues there. So. That's all I have for that one. The other one, the rate study, uh, Talking to Dan Jackson, the guy's doing the rate study and he completed everything. He's, he gave us a copy, so I provided a copy for you guys uh, uh, for this meeting so y'all can revise it and look at it. Do you have any questions? But the 
the main question that I have now is that uh, he can do a workshop to do the presentation to explain everything that's in there, either on the 18th, which is a Saturday, or on the 22nd, prior to the regular board meeting, around 5 o'clock. He said it takes about an hour, more or less, to do that presentation. So the 18th is out for me, but uh, okay. yeah, 5 o'clock on the 22nd, prior to the regular meeting. Everybody's on the same page on that? Uh, 22nd at 5 o'clock? Gentlemen, right. this, this is not a board action, but... Right? On the 22nd? Yes, sir. 22nd. 22nd at 5 p.m.? I can't, I can't hear him here right now because I don't... Okay. Oh, oh. Well, we can keep going with the reporter, I guess. No problem with that. Then uh, the project update, I know that I uh, heard from Mr. Thomas that you know, he's been here a couple of years and he feels like he hasn't accomplished nothing here, but Zero, zero. I, <laughs> I uh, mentioned to him you know, uh, several things that have been going on. Yeah, I gave him a list of that, and I have the list, I didn't bring it with me, but I want to also uh, include in that one and write some numbers on the projects that we've had that are uh, that have been cutting costs on, on the in-house, the in-house, correct. And Victor's going to present part of that one in his, his uh, presentation now. So, yeah. So I'm looking forward to you know giving the board an update on all the projects that we've done in the past few years. Uh, and then the last one, the evaluation form that I had provided for you guys at the last meeting. There, there was two of them. One. Uh, well, I, I can make copies of now that the last meeting. Yeah. But I can get you another one because I've, I've got a, the, the light came back on. Uh, <coughs> one that says, uh, the one that has part A performance factors, that was the one that was uh, used for Mr. Santelos. And then the other one was one that he had provided to Daisy but never was used. And that's the other one has a name on top of the line and the date. So I, I just uh, want to make sure that everybody's on the same page and uses the same one. Okay. So what, uh, let's advise the rest to which one do y'all want to use it? Your cup of tea needs to Yeah, I This was the one that we should tell this one, yes, this one, because we looked at the record. That one was one that was provided and then they were Yeah, we can get you a copy of it. Just let me know which one you want. Know. This one? Yeah. This one? Yeah. Yeah. That's the one we normally use for... That's the one we're familiar with. Yeah, more familiar with. Okay. So they do that for you. Is that? No. Oh, it's this one. See, that's all we need for the day. Okay, you need a copy of You need a copy I have one. I have one. Okay, have one. Okay, and that's all I have for right now. Give me a Just make the copy of this. I'll put it on. All right. Well, I guess uh, we'll just go ahead and move the first item was the series 2012 bond projects balance update. But being that I lost power, my hands were tied, so I wasn't able to get that updated put together. I, I was in the middle of working on it when we lost electricity. So I, I, don't have, I don't have the update ready. It'll have to be presented at the next meeting. Um, but, but just moving on to the construction progress. Um, at the Quadras pump station right now, they're still, they were deep watering the, the suction pipe where they're trying to fix the pipe leak. And by tomorrow, they should know, they should identify where the leak is at, and then at that point they'll figure out what they need to do to fix it. And based, so tomorrow I'll really have a timeline for fixing that one pipe leak, and once that's done, we can go ahead and do startup. Um, the other part is the AC unit's supposed to get here October 18th, 
and then from there, the electricians and the alarm guys will basically take about a week or two to get finished up on that part. So, you know, that, that's where we're at with the pump station, getting finished out. Um, but, you know, so maybe about three weeks or so. When is it going to be working? Well, we don't have a timeline yet. Basically, tomorrow, when we know when the leak's going to get fixed, or what it's going to take to fix a leak, at that point, we can really find out if it's going to be a week or, or more to get that leak fixed. So that's that's pretty much where we're at. Um, and then... Is that uh, on the contractor's uh, side of the leak? Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's um, something in, in a megalog or a valve that, that he hasn't figured out yet. But they were getting the mud out today and just trying to get it exposed to find out where it's at. But that's that's where the pump station is at. For lift station 19, um, they're they're um, working on the fence. They should be done with the fence tomorrow, and then they're going to go ahead and uh, check the the Isla Grand sprinkler system, <coughs> do any repairs that they might have to do, um, get Isla Blanca's approval for the site restoration, and uh, go ahead and um, you know do the landscaping and finish it out. Mm -hmm. Here in the next week or so. Yes, the lift station itself is in operation. Um, there's, there's cosmetics. Right, we're just down to the cosmetics, putting the final, you know, whole rock and that sort of thing. And there are three pumps. The pump number two um, is up with pumping power. They were fixing it, and it's in transit coming back. So basically, once once that pump gets here, which is any day now, I mean, they just have to drop it back in and hand over the lift station back to us. But that's, that's where we're at. Um, for the water plant two emergency power addition, we had the um, we had the uh, you know electrical shutdown from September 29th to October 3rd that week to pull all the wire and basically the part we, we did we didn't finish with the electrical shutdown. The section that didn't get done was the control wiring for between the generator and the automatic transfer switch. So the right now we're we're trying to get some detailed plans from from the generator manufacturer just just so we can answer some or clarify give, give direction to the contractor because they're still clear with, with the control wiring so so we, we're going to take the next week to get that control wiring done and at the same time we're ordering some more caustic and, and other chemicals to get water plant 2 running as well and so we'll probably schedule our next electrical shutdown the october 21st 22nd and with that we'll be able to finish out the electrical work um, and, and get that wrapped up. But that's that's basically where it's at right now. You're, you're talking about an auto control control an automatic or is it started by hand? No. Generator? No, because no, the wires are not terminated uh, from in, in the switchboard. So so the control wiring is, isn't terminated. They, they've done the wires, you know, from ATS one to ATS two in the generator. But the generator, the locked-in group, needs to come in and terminate their side of it still. Yeah, so that, that's, that's what's pending for the next shutdown. But doesn't the generator have its own power source in case the, you know, the electricity, like the day goes out, it doesn't have a, like a, its own well, power source to, to, to flip it on? No, the wiring's not done yet. Well, we, we haven't tightened all the wires. Do have that capacity? Yeah, it would have, oh. yeah, yeah. If, if the wiring was complete, the generator would kick on this wow. afternoon. But, that they still haven't finished all the wiring. But that's, that's where it's at right now. Yeah, and I, and I know there was one discussion about moving that disconnect inside the building. Yeah. And the thing is that to pull that wire and everything, it was going to cost something like nine grand to, to have to move that inside. And so rather than deal with that, we're planning to put an enclosure around the disconnect. Yeah. Because that's going to be cheaper than you, trying to move it. Yeah. Yeah, but but talk about controls, I mean it's starting automatic and things like that. Usually when the controls are not working, you can start it manually. What you're saying is 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 what controls or Well it, what? It, it it's the wiring for them to call out from to call the generator turn on. Because you know how there's there's yeah, the two thousand amp that that's the, the control wiring. Power goes about. off, a breathing really goes off and one starts and one one keeps open, one keeps closed and that like, that's what you mean by controls. Yes. We used to in the old days you put it in hand, manual, and you start and transfer by hand, whatever it is. 
see when there's going to be some handoff automatic on that thing at some point. Right, right. It's, it's that, that, that they're trying to figure out the sequence of, because since we have two utility services and they both go to a single generator, that's the control wire that, that we need the direct to get straight out. Incomplete your wire. Right. Incomplete your wire. That's the only thing. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. And, and then this last item we had was just the wastewater collection system hydraulic model, which we had done with uh, CDM Smith. And uh, I was hoping to have more progress on the flow monitoring. I was talking to LMB to look at a proposal for installing the meters and start collecting data. And uh, we, we just haven't had that, I haven't seen that proposal yet. So we're just still trying to get moving on the flow monitoring so we can you know, revise the, the, um, the wet weather factors to determine how the, how the rain events impact the wastewater system. Um, like basically, because in our model, you know, we, we modeled our wastewater collection system, and we used uh, like we don't have rain gauge data, and so we don't have any storm event, any any data for rain events, and so what we're trying to do is start a flow monitoring program, and so we'll record the actual flow in the sewer pipes, the, the gravity pipes, when it does rain, and we get that higher flow from all the rain events, like what happened where Jake's ended up having an issue. But in our case, for those dolphin and red snapper lift stations, our, our model doesn't predict there's overflows in that area. And so really, that's not something that would require us to upgrade the gravity lines or anything major in that area. It was more of a, of a problem within that one connection itself. So, but, but basically, like for example, in our model, we saw a lot of potential overflows in, at the morning side lift station. Potential what? Uh, like overflows, like when the, sewer's gonna, when the sewer doesn't have enough capacity around morning side. And so before we want to go into design and try to, you know, expand based on presumed data, we want to collect that actual data and see if, if our numbers are, are valid to actually upgrade sewer pipes and, and that sort of thing. So that, that's really what the flow monitoring is for, is just to improve the accuracy of the model. That's, uh, that's what wraps up the engineer's report. Charles, what's the progress or what's the status of, of Trying to eliminate the salt problem like it was going to be the waste water plant. Oh, well, I, mean, I guess there's really been no activity. I mean, the only thing is is we we haven't proceeded with uh, in situ form. I know we would talk about the point repairs, but I doubt yeah. they've been. Done well, yet. they haven't been done because we had the rains come in, so uh, we have to use the water, the ground kind of. Uh, so is that going to be scheduled sometime soon? Yes, it, it's already on the schedule. Uh, they had already marked the areas where they were going to start, but when the rain came down, now we got to remark again. We got to call out for a remark again and start doing our uh, point repairs again. Yeah, we, you know, we spent a lot of extra money on that wastewater plant, and we need to get that effluent used somehow. We, we need to step that up. Have, have we done anything as far as this uh, lining situation? That's what we were just talking about. I know. Well, have we done anything yet? Yes. Yeah, what we do? Yeah, the, the sections that didn't have any point repairs or any offsets, all the, all that lining got completed in March of last year. Yeah. And, and so basically, whatever could get lined without point repairs already got done in the it old town. Line. Yes. Okay. We, many, we, we've about, done how about, many, about how many feet? Many feet? Oh gosh. I don't, I don't know the feet. I just how know many, that. How that much of the crushed plate? Well, uh, it, feet <coughs> well, if, if the deflection is more than ten percent, you can't line it. You got to. The only option is open cut. And that's ebony. And so, actually, the Luna Vistas. I think they're looking at doing a street uh, repaving on Ebony Street the first quarter next year. And so, we might want to take that chance to do the gravity sewer ahead of the, ahead of the street repair just to get it all done at once. So that's that's something we need to seriously look at and start looking at replacing that line. Um, and and combine it with the street project. Yeah, but, but since the street project is coming, right, so, you know, we wouldn't have to be stuck painting for a new street since the city's already going to be doing it on their, on their bill. We can go in, you know, after we tear it up with the gravity sewer, they can come in and pave the street on their country. So I need to coordinate with uh, with Mr. Bell over there and get that scheduled. But that's that's, that's what's going on with Ebony. Uh, but but as far as the, the dollar amount that we spent for, for the Curie Place pipe, on the part that we did, it was on the range of, gosh, was it like maybe... Two hundred eighty thousand, yeah. something like that. I don't. I don't know. Well, it was two hundred something. Yeah. yeah, it was something in that range that we've already done. Good. Well, that concludes the engineer's report. Uh, Director of operations.
Okay, this is just a, this is just kind of like an introductory uh, a monthly report. I'm going to try and do this. Uh, well, I'm going to, I have it scheduled to do it the first meeting of every month. Uh, this one, this one's going to be a little short just because I, I just started co collecting some of the information that I had. I know I attached some photos in the, towards the end there, uh, and it was just to show the uh, water, water plant one. We finished at the Clarifier A Basin Rehab, and then the, the ground storage rehab as well. And also, uh, right now we're in the middle of still replacing some of the fence line around the water plant. Uh, and on, on those three jobs being completed um, with the material and, and the labor for, for all those three, we kind of just also spent around $57,000 on everything, uh, material and labor from, from in-house employees. Uh, everything was done in-house. So instead of getting a contractor to come in, you know, this way was a lot more effective uh, cheaper. Uh, there's also a, a photo in there from the, uh, the butterfly valves over at the river pump station. Uh, we already installed two. The third one is on order. Uh, it's going to be delivered so we can we can put it in there. Uh, on those, uh, the pumps themselves were about, about $3,900. I mean, the, the valves themselves were about $3,900 each. Are these, before, are these before and after pictures? Yes, the, the clarifier are before and after, and then the ground storage tank. And then the uh, butterfly valves are right in between the clarifier and the, and the ground storage tank. We have it where we kept off the, the butterfly. Uh, you know what a valve is? Yeah, looks like a butterfly. And that was kind of what uh, I think Mr. Thomas wanted us to, to do there. So he can be happy about that. Well, I did not want to go down and get those check valves fixed and we didn't have to keep these in, but we need to put them in anyway to isolate the pump system. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so there, and all three are going to have one. Right now, two of them, two of them are on, and the third <coughs> one's going to, is already ordered and going to be installed. On there, roughly, we spent about, about $9,000 on parts and labor on that one. Uh, and then uh, also the, uh, there's no picture on this next one, but the wastewater collection already finished the, uh, the storm drain for uh, interlocal agreement with the South Padre Island. And I think, did, did we get a check in yesterday? From them? Uh, sometime right. this week, we should, we should get a check in already from them, from the, from the interlocal agreement. We received the five videos, 15? Yes, 15,000. Imagine how much we spent. Close to 60,000. For the for the rehab on the clarifier and the uh, ground storage tank, how much? How much would you say we save if we uh, go with a contractor? Well, I, I know that I have received some folks for the ground storage tanks. Well, just one ground storage tank, but these guys painted both. It was like over two hundred eighty thousand for one, and it was a uh, minor stuff. It wasn't like very serious. So uh, the the the, the uh, clarifier. It cost like a close to seven, eight hundred thousand dollars to repair. So we did save quite a bit of doing it in-house and uh, get TCQ off our back because they were it was a requirement that we have to co comply with TCQ. They would have fined us if we didn't finish it. So it's like shut down project, you shut it down, you know, like you're doing uh, yes. Land yes. stuff shut that, down. This was this was done while while we had this one shut down and we had uh, water plant two going. So that was our chance to, to work on these over here. So. Then would you say we, we do have hard working employees? Oh, yes, yes definitely. That's, yes. That's nice. uh, one thing that uh, I think you mentioned on the material, so the, the equipment that they purchased is, is still handy for more projects. Yes. So there's uh, the welders, uh, cutting boards, and everything. That they you see, uh, all that is, is going, and all that is uh, progress for this project. Uh, yeah, like a sandblaster and all that. We, we do have a, a sandblasting machine. We do have uh, yeah. uh, people that know how to use it. We already have our. And the same, the same tools that were bought here, we're, uh, we're still going to use them for when we do the clarifier we have in, on the island. <coughs> uh, the gate valve, uh, the gate valve, and the clarifier we have. We're going to use the same stuff. That's <coughs> what I mean. Always the tools, they'll do the work. Yes. They got it. They can't go out there and try to do the work. Yeah. 
and then uh, something that matters or something that the public know that the water is safe and just a, a citation of whatever was from the state of the CQ and the assembly. So why, why are all of a sudden we're having this issue? Because I don't you know the past, uh, we, since I've been on the board for, and has been on the board a long time, and I, we've never seen this occur as much as it's occurring now. We, 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 we've, we've been, we've been changing, uh, we changed labs, is, uh, I think was is one of the major issues. We were going uh, with South Texas lab before, or South no, Texas let, let me explain this uh, more clear. We were using a, a few bees laboratory system for quite a long time and then the samples were coming out for okay. take. Then uh, they closed down, they weren't going to sample for anybody else, just for themselves. So, and then they were like the most reasonable price too. But they're not sampling no more, so we had to go with another laboratory. So we went with Analab. We we're finding out that they're taking more than 30 hours to send the sample. Uh, by the time they sample that uh, coliform, uh, it's, it's like 44 hours. That's what I got in the report. Because it gives you a time when they pick it up and when they sample it. So we're finding out that it's taking too long. So the, the, there's chlorine in the system, right? When they get a sample, they get the corn residual, you know, it's safe to drink because it has chlorine. But it's taking too long by the time it gets over there. So when they do a sample after 30 hours, it's already like... Sorry bad, sorry it's bad fine coliform. Coliforms everywhere. It increases in the sample after the sample is taken. Well, it does it increase once the sample is taken and it's in this jar? You're saying these levels increase? They do. But the more the chances is that they, that it increases because it's longer in the environment, you know, like temperature. How is there where the, the so temperature has to do with it? You know, <clears throat> So it does increase in a closed container. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. And so, uh, that's what we found out when we switched over to South Texas Lab again. And that's the one we were using years ago before. Okay, but even with the South, can I ask a question, Mr. Chairman? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. Even with this new lab, we still got a notification. No, no, it was from the prior. So the yeah, we, 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 we checked everything and then we found that the time frame was. Too long. Hi, Charles, do you concur? Yes. The, our, our last uh, it's incident. too long for them to do samples. Yeah, because after 30 hours, the sample's no good. I mean, because you have to uh, put a drop of preservative to eliminate the chlorine. And so that's why you only have a certain time frame to run okay, the test. Is there, is there any way that could be put in the notification? Um, well, we, we just take a training class, and, and they have some standard language of like most of it's, even though total coliform could be anything, but it's not necessarily a, a health risk, because of course well, bacteria I, is everywhere. I know, uh, but then, then, I mean, if we have to do a standard blanket notification but for TCQ requirements, we got to do that. We need to put something else out there also saying the samples you were know, with a lab, they were taking more than the 30 hours. Uh, the samples were de de degraded or whatever, and which is causing it. We need to put something else out there besides this, that standard stuff. Yeah, I, I agree that we can add additional language because, of okay. course, there's the there's yeah. a state requirement language that we have right. to put, and then we can add, uh, you know, more further explanation and. Okay. Well, I, I mean, that's the that's the language. To, we need to ask them because this has been going on like they have that there. Maybe they they they. they, they. also has a board. Yeah, I mean. Uh, they decide on things like that. I mean, if anything, we have to add additional language because that's the that's the state required language. You have two um, positive samples in a month. You're required to send out the newspaper advertising card. Was TCEQ made aware that the sampling, you know, the test took more than 30 hours to? Yes. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, the thing is, the uh, right now we got a notice of enforcement letter September 12th on, on the same issue. And so we've been going back and forth with, with TCEQ and, and going through those issues. And then also, in addition to that, there's been some customer complaints for now the regional office started conducting an investigation. Uh, today, actually, they, they did a surprise inspection. And so they're basically requesting data and pulling that information. And so TCEQ is actually, the regional office is preparing a report as we speak to confirm the whole time. And, and I mean, we do have a dead end 
Site 28 mm -hmm. location. That's not going to be a whole time. But, but basically, that's, so I think they were saying on Corral Street or where, where Tequila Frogs used to be. Wow. And basically, there, there's, it's a dead-end main, and none of the services are active there. And so that's probably one site that can't be, you know, we can't call that a whole time problem. That's just more well, of a dead-end main. We're accepting blame for something that, that, that the lab, you know, failed to do. And I, and I don't think we should, we should do that. Right. that. You know, we should we should get TCQ or something to come back and say, look, you know, the, the, the test was flawed, it was, you know, it was in, uh, invalid, therefore, you know, we shouldn't take blame for this. It may be water under the bridge now because TCQ will probably tell you, well, that's, that's what the report came out, but I don't know. But it, it's, it's worthwhile. Right. No, I mean, I mean we, we, should, we should have been more proactive, I mean, honestly, yeah. you know, and, and, and not let it get to this point. But we're at we're, we're we're we are correcting the problem, even though we're going through rough public notices, yeah. and that, that's kind of where we're at at this at this stage. But but for the because the thing is the the mail outs, I, I think they're going out the September mail outs are going to the billing cycles. So did one already get sent out in for, for the next cycle? Do you know when the cycles get mailed out? Today. Okay, so today is might be the first cycle that's getting the September notice, mm -hmm. and then the, when when the other two cycles go out in the next month. There's already a pre-printed letter that's already on the route to get delivered to everybody. Wow. So, I don't know, I think we did add some additional language to it. Uh, I, I have to verify it. Verify the point. If we get the, maybe the prices back on the skimmer trays that we were working at. Yeah, at any buoy where we replaced, where Balch did that. Oh, and it is a Blanca. Yeah, the one where where we're replacing that the, the trough on the clarifier. Yeah. No, I, I'm still working on the bid right now. I, I'm hoping to hit the streets on it next week, and so I'm going to be bidding out the four weir gates, and then that canal gate on the aeration basin, and then of course changing all the F1 launder to FRP. Try to put the pipe in yet. Yeah, they, they've got, uh, they ordered some supplies already, they're just waiting for it to come in and then they're going to start doing it. Okay. Uh, they, they've already got the plan of how they're going to do it. Yeah, yeah. when they get something done, I'll Anything else under the director about the regulations? I got, I got a question. Uh, Victor, are we doing any, does the district do any type of meter testing? Yes. By five eighths, I mean, we randomly sample on a monthly basis certain meters to see if they're doing okay. Uh, as far as the meter itself, and as far as the, the whoever does the meter reading, making sure the electronics is working properly. Yes, uh, and, and we do have a, a monthly report. Uh, Billing kind of emails me on uh, how many they test and how many they change out, or, or how many are good, or how many they. Uh, I'll, I'll add it into the next one that we you have you have that in there. Okay, awesome. I didn't know if we could, were doing something. Oh yeah. Okay. Any other questions? That's it. Item number nine, interim finance director report. And, uh, this I have a question: Why has it been moved away from the approval of, of, of the disbursement? When was that the last? This is just a report. This is just a report. I know it's a report, but we used to have it up here. No, it's a fine. The financials will see at the end of the month. Give you an update on how, how we're going on the, the 
them in parlance. We use there's usually been a pre audit meeting with the, with the audit team and the staff and the audit before we actually before the audit is actually done. Before? Yes. There's usually uh, the right last time. Cover. Yeah, the last time it was uh, before, before the before they did the presentation. I remember that. In the past, maybe it wasn't just done this past year, but I know in the years past we we met with the other years ahead of time. Right. We're gonna have one too because mm -hmm. we're gonna still have to comply with some information. Uh, possibly the thirtieth, is it? The thirtieth. We had a meeting the last week of the month. Well, when they when they come by, they, they, that's yeah, yeah. Now they don't want them to make a special trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just can tell him what day and what time and we can set it up. How many years does it month? Uh, three years. This is the third year? Mm -hmm. Is it three years but four other times? Is that for the short year? So I will check with them on the date and that way we can send you an email.